I am introducing a new segment on my channel, where we explore the rich history of my beloved hometown, Burnley. Join me, as we delve into the archives, and uncover fascinating stories about the people who have called this town home. From the highs to the lows, we'll be exploring various locations and their significance. Exploring death, love, mystery and tragedy along the way. Our first stop is the Mitre Hotel. Proudly standing at the crossroad where Accrington Road and Trafalgar meet, there stood a public house, once known as the Mitre Hotel. Although now nothing but dust and rubble, this veritable castle of conviviality was situated at 118, 120 Westgate, before officially closing its doors in 1998, with the license fully expiring four years later, in 2002. The building was constructed by a Mr. T. F. Ward, an agent for the esteemed Mr. Townley Parker of Cuerden, who himself resided nearby, at Springwood Estate. It is worth noting that historians have yet to pinpoint the exact date of its construction. It is probable that the charming inn, with all its quaintness and rustic charm, was erected in response to the construction of the new rail station, which is now named Burnley Barracks Station. Nevertheless, it is likely that the grand edifice of the hotel stood in the place of a venerable structure, perhaps a coaching house of yore. While historical records indicate that the current building was erected post-1848, the presence of stables situated at the rear of the establishment leads one to ponder whether the hotel was intended to serve more than just the newly established railway clientele. These stables would go on to have an interesting future during the lifetime of the hotel. Construction of the new railway station was spearheaded by the East Lancashire Railway Company on the 18th of September 1848. Initially intended as a terminus for trains plying their way from Accrington, this station saw a steady expansion in its scope of operations over time. The following year in 1849, the town witnessed the completion of the impressive Burnley Viaduct that connected Burnley and Cone, ergo leading to closure of Burnley Westgate Station and birthed a newer larger station christened Bank Top to serve as passenger needs. This station is now called Burnley Central. However, the area around the Mitre Hotel was proving to be a thriving hub, and as time passed, the surrounding area flourished. Houses, mills and even a cavalry barracks sprung up around the station, reflecting the ever-increasing demand for its services. Eventually, in September of 1851, the East Lancashire Railway Company obliged this growing call by reopening the once-defunct Westgate Station, now renamed as Burnley Barracks Station, a suitable tribute to its close proximity with the imposing barracks nearby. It is indeed fascinating how numerous roads converged upon that erstwhile junction at Mitre Inn, each of which still holds an eminent place in West Burnley's history. The path from Westgate, originating near town centre, both Accrington Road and Padiam Road leading out from their reputed towns, all descending upon this steadfast junction through their respective routes. Furthermore, Trafalgar Street added to these already bustling thoroughfares, with its industrious Weaver's Triangle attracting great traffic volumes daily. While another portion between two notable establishments, namely, the Mitre Pub and Angel Inn adopted the name Trinity Street, and yet, more than just arbitrary nomenclature distinguishes these avenues, each derives its significance from peculiar origins and links to prominent personalities who shaped Burnley's past. For instance, Cranmer Street elicits powerful allusions to religious figures within Anglican circles, as it was christened after Thomas Cranmer himself, a man whose impact on ecclesiastical affairs earned him recognition as Canterbury's first archbishop during the fruitful years spanning 1489 to 1556. Similarly intriguing is Pomfret Street, which encapsulates an association with George Pomfret, proprietor of Albert Mill evocative of the booming industry now long since past. Ducket Street has a rich history, with James Ducket's entrepreneurial success in manufacturing sanitary wares at his Blanel Street factory being a notable highlight. Nearby, there was a massive clay pit that dominated the area, which was accessed through Burnham Gate and transported underground via a tunnel beneath Accrington Road. 
Further down Accrington Road stands Kewerden Terrace, an assembly of buildings situated upon a landing that once belonged to preeminent members of the Townley family. Blanell Street is named after an old homestead and farm that was once located in the Coal Clough Lane area. Mitre Street, situated to the left of Trinity Church, was home to several small courts and enclosed housing, including Crossley Court, which was listed in 1932. Mitre Place, which was situated at 2 Accrington Road, but has since been demolished, used to serve as the rear entrance to the Mitre Inn. It also contained a couple of houses on the right side of the pub, and at one point, a cafe on the corner, which later became a taxi office. Additionally, Trinity Terrace is situated at 8 Accrington Road. There were several establishments in the area that shared the name Mitre, including the Mitre Timberworks, Mitre Bridge, and Mitre Dockyard. It is likely that the name originated from the Holy Trinity Church. Mr. William Bracewell was the first recorded occupant of the Mitre Hotel. It is likely that he was associated with Mr. William Bracewell, who co-owned the Mitre Timberworks. William served as the longest known landlord at the pub. The building's windows on Cramer Street resembled those of a toll booth, which is reasonable, as Westgate was probably a toll road. Edward and Esther Griffiths were the proprietors during the Mitre Hotel's heyday in 1871. Samuel Holt took over the tenancy rights prior to the auction on June 14, 1875. An advertisement in the Burnley Gazette from May 29 of that year confirms this. The advertisement stated, Valuable public house for sale within the borough of Burnley. To be sold by auction, by Messrs M and T Watson, at the house of Mr Samuel Holt, the Mitre Inn, Burnley, on Monday, the 14th day of June next, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Subject to such conditions, as shall be then, and there produced, all that commodious, and well accustomed in, or public house, situated in Westgate, Burnley, at its junction with Trafalgar Road and Trinity Street, called the Mitre Inn, now in the occupation of Mr. Samuel Holt, as tenant thereof, together with the yard, wash house, and appurtenances, thereto belonging, also all that four-stalled stable and coach house, with hayloft over, together with all that three-stalled stables adjoining, and also that cottage site in, and being number one Cranmer Street, also that cottage situated over the coach house, and which is now unoccupied. The hotel contains in the basement very extensive wine, spirits and beer cellars with stone vaulted roofs, on the ground floor, commercial room, parlor, bar, bar parlor, vault, kitchen, scullery, pantry, and spacious corridors, on the first floor, a well-furnished billiard room, 38 feet 6 inch by 16 feet, sitting room and four bedrooms on the second floor, three bedrooms and club room, and bathroom, the latter being fitted up with hot and cold water. The whole of the premises are in excellent repair, neatly and substantially stone-built, being well furnished throughout, and have a building frontage to Cranmer Street of 79 feet, Trafalgar Road of 43 feet, and to Westgate of 42 feet. The Mitre Inn being situated at the junction of three of the best and most frequent thoroughfares in Burnley, and within 100 yards of the Burnley Barracks station of the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway, its situation is daily improving in value. The property is of freehold tenure, and will be sold subject to the payment of yearly ground rent of 12 shillings. And to a lease thereof to Messrs Brown and Astley, and which expires in the month of March, 1876. The tenant will show the premises, and further information may be had on application to Mr Humphrey Bracewell, the owner, Westgate, Burnley, to the auctioneers at their office 58, Manchester Road, Burnley, and at the offices of Messrs Artindale and Artindale. In the 1881 census, the hotel was wrongly named the Myrtle Inn. It is believed that the mistaken spelling or handwriting might have contributed to the mix-up. The public house had a name board outside that displayed a bishop's mitre. Additionally, there was a mural at the entrance of the pub that also featured a mitre. Given that Burnley was a garrison town with a significant military presence, 
The Mitre Hotel's reputation as a refined venue made it a favored destination for officers rather than rank and file soldiers. The West End Physical Culture Club was established in 1927 and operated out of a small gymnasium located in the yard behind the Mitre Hotel. The club was managed by former Army physical training instructors. Unfortunately, on its opening night, a tragic incident occurred when Thomas Walsh, an 18-year-old resident of Simpson Street, fell from the roof and sustained severe injuries that led to his death. Thomas had been leaning against some railings on a veranda when they suddenly gave way, causing him to fall into the yard and he suffered head and back injuries. Despite making it home to his father, Peter Walsh, Thomas passed away from his injuries two days later. Furthermore, the stables served a secondary purpose in subsequent years as a cherished venue for the local pigeon fanciers club, who would release flocks of these feathered creatures from the alley adjacent to the pub, resulting in a striking and memorable display, which could be witnessed monthly. The Mitre Hotel was a well-liked establishment for many years, but its fortunes took a turn for the worse in 1974 when the M65 was constructed. This resulted in the removal of numerous nearby properties, which led to a significant reduction in the pub's customer base. Additionally, the decline of local industry further contributed to the pub's eventual closure in 1998. In the early 2000s, the hotel was purchased with the intention of converting it into a carpet store. Unfortunately, during the renovations process, many of the original features were removed, and one of the decorative double-arched windows was destroyed. The carpet shop never opened, and the borough council eventually acquired the hotel. While demolishing a chimney in an upstairs room in July 1995, workers stumbled upon the remains of a baby that had been wrapped in a Times newspaper from around 1920. Despite investigations by the police and an inquest, the identity and cause of death of the baby remain unknown. One theory is that the baby belonged to a woman who was staying at the hotel to be near her lover at the nearby army barracks. The Mitre Hotel, which had been serving the locals of Westgate and Accrington Road for over a century, had fallen into disrepair and remained vacant for more than two decades. In response, local social landlords, Calico, proposed a new well-being project for the site. In 2016, the abandoned building gained attention once again when a mural of Burnley's manager, Sean Dyche, was painted on its walls to celebrate the team's promotion to the Premier League. Dave Jones, a local graffiti artist, created the artwork as a tribute to the Ginger Mourinho and called for Mitre Street to be renamed Sean Dyche Way. Despite this, Calico was able to obtain planning permission to demolish the Grade 2 listed hotel. The mural was dismantled and gifted to the Junior Clarets. A modern facility has risen from the ruins of the former Mitre Hotel, boasting 26 rooms and dedicated spaces for community projects and training. Its design is focused on enhancing the health and well-being of its patrons. The construction of this state-of-the-art building was undertaken by Ringstone's maintenance and construction with a total cost of approximately £3.5 million. It officially opened its doors for business in 2018. For an illustrious century and a half, the Grand Mitre Hotel reigned supreme at one of Burnley's most noteworthy gateways. It was an epicentre for people from all walks of life, welcoming locals hailing from both Accrington and Paddeham Road as well as those who toiled in the Weaver's Triangle. For many families within Burnley, this establishment acted as a beacon of leisure, where joy abounded, but also where sorrow lurked. Even during its final days, the formidable Mitre Hotel stood tall with an unyielding demeanor akin to Sean Dyche himself, whose face adorned its walls, until it finally surrendered itself to make way for a new building that aimed to forge ahead into bright horizons. The culmination of such legendary status renders the Mitre Hotel a veritable microcosm of Burnley's history, reverberating fondly through cherished remembrances held by past patrons.